everyone. Today we're going to talk about what makes up a typical NASA Spec 3 roll cage. So the cage that's required for NASA Spec 3 sits on top of the NASA CCR regulations. So you start with a basic six point cage with the allowance for two foot protection bars and you make sure that you meet every requirement in the NASA CCR. So there's a requirement for thickness of tubing, and that is dependent on the weight of the car, as well as the diameter of the tube that you use. So if you use a thinner diameter tube, the walls need to be thicker. If you use a larger diameter tube, the walls can be thinner. Then there are basic requirements, such as where the mounts touch. So the front of the cage needs to meet the ground or the floor of the car on a plinth which is a rectangular box that's welded to the floor or a flat plate, which we'll show you in a second on the rear. The A-pillar bars need to meet near the front of the car. Then optionally, there can be a dash bar across the front that connects the two A-pillar bars. This is not required for NASA, but it's a good idea to do. And then of course, on the roof, the two A-pillar bars need to be tied together with the halo. There's a couple options in the CCR that allow different configurations of these bars which uh, you can read in the CCR itself. The diagonal bar on the halo is optional but highly recommended. Door bars can either be the NASCAR style where they come from the A pillar, they come out, they bend, and sometimes they'll have an angle such as this. And then they bend back and meet the main hoop which is at the B pillar. X bars are also allowed. This is a pretty bad design. The way it's built here is fine. These gussets are fine, but the door bars should actually angle out like that so that when a force is imparted on them from the side, instead of these bars going into tension where they're being stretched and pulled apart as they bend in towards you, but instead if they're angled out, and a triangle, they create compression against the A pillar bar and the main hoop at the B pillar. So something to consider there. For spec three, you're allowed to extend it out and then cut the door to fit these bars. That's also trivial weight savings, but something people like to do. And then of course, you wanna make sure that when you're planning your cage, you leave provisions or a way to mount your uh, center or your window net, some kind of uh, location to put a fire pole, maybe even incorporate a spare kill switch location somewhere up here, maybe with, with a pull handle. And potentially on the dash bar, leave a spot to connect your center net. It's not required for NASA unless you don't have a containment seat, but if you ever want to run your Spec 3 with BMW Club, they require a center net, and it's, it's a good thing to have. It locates the seat, uh, keeps your hands contained in a rollover, things like that. Um, other considerations are how close you want the bars to be. So my cage is actually a pretty bad example because everything's pretty far away from the chassis, and especially with these door bars, they're too, they're too close, so they don't give you a lot of room to get in and out of the car. So try to get everything as snug as you can to the chassis itself. So in the rear, you'll see that we have what is called the main hoop. So this has to be one continuous tube per the NASA CCR. and has a maximum amount of bends and things like that. It can be slightly canted back as you see here, but there can't be any kind of bends in this direction, only in a single plane across. Uh, you need to have a horizontal bar here to stabilize this, uh, a diagonal bar going from one corner to the other, as well as down tubes. So you'll hear these be called down tubes or C-pillar bars, but where these mount are in the back and they help form a triangle. So this bar is optional. You'll see sometimes people will have an X here. And you'll see this diagonal bar here is also optional per the NASA CCR. Sometimes you'll see people put an X. Um, if you have concerns in an E36 about rear visibility with your X back there, 
it's not really a concern. The window is so big, the seating position is so center line that having that there doesn't really block your view. So uh, you can see here that I have a smaller bar for my harness and that allows the uh, proper angle going into the seats because if your seat is too close to your harness bar, you may have an extreme angle going up. And the way that you want your harnesses to mount to your cage is so that when they go through the seat, they're pulling down on your shoulder, not down on the seat. So you can see here that these go down when they go through this hole. They never contact the seat when they're strapped against myself. So that's something to consider there. And then of course, uh, you wanna triangulate things wherever you can. So with Spec 3, any tubes within the cage are free. You can connect anything really to anywhere as long as the basic requirements of the CCR are met. As long as it's from, as long as it's from one tube to another tube within the cage. So we talked about six mounting points before. So two in the front, two here, and then two back here. You can't touch the chassis anywhere else with the cage. If you do that, it's no longer a six point cage. It's, you know, whatever additional amounts of connections you make with the core exception being foot protection. So it's hard to see in here, but there is a bar that runs from the A pillar bar to my floor and that's called foot protection. There's an allowance for those so that if you get into a wreck, the floor pan doesn't cave in and crush your feet. So back to the, the back of the cage here. This is an example of a mounting plate as opposed to a plinth. And you can see it's just flat on the, the floor of the car. This is actually touching part of the wheel well, which is not a good design. Ideally, you want it to land uh, somewhere that is not going to crumple as um, easily as a wheel well would because it's not structural. However, on a sedan, your options are kind of limited on where you land this. And something to note, is that this down tube is uninterrupted. It goes and it touches the chassis and there's nothing that bisects it. So a common failure point or a place where people will fail tech is the down tubes here will come and they'll actually land on the horizontal bar. And that's more common in coupes. And I can show you a picture here. This is an example of what not to do. The down tube landing on a horizontal bar. Here you'll see it lands on the plate and then all the other tubes are connecting into it. There are suggestions in the CCR talking about where they want all the tubes to meet up and um, all of the welds on any tubing have to be 360 degrees. So make sure you plan for that when you're triangulating all these tubes to make sure that the first weld you do doesn't block the second weld you need to do. And that's why you'll see plinths usually or you'll see somebody will remove the roof so that they can lower the cage, do all the welds, or weld from the top and put the roof back on, which is a lot harder. And if you make the cage shorter by a few inches, you can get all the welds on the top, and then you can just lift it up and then weld the box under. Or sometimes people will cut a hole in the floor and they'll drop the whole cage down after it's tacked and then be able to get to the top of it within the car and then raise it back up and then weld the plate back over the floor. So. Coops are a little bit different. We already showed you one picture back there. Now we'll show another picture of a good example of how you can land the down tubes on a coupe. So on a coupe, this opening is much, much larger and you can take the down tubes instead of coming out an angle outward, you can have them a little bit more inboard and they can just go straight through right here because this is open and land on the floor in the trunk. So ideally, there's a couple different spots back here where you can land. But some of this floor is hollow and some of it is a little bit stronger due to doubling up of the metal and things like that. So make sure that you're paying attention to where you're landing the cage and how you do the mounting plate back here. One common mistake that people will make on a coupe, because this opening is here to about right here, is they'll try to land the down tube here. But the problem with doing that is there's no place to land it flat. So they'll land it here, they'll put a tube across, they'll try to build this up, but it's not landing on the floor, it's landing half on the floor and then half in nothing. So you can build up a plinth and land it on the plinth, 
or you can just run it straight down to the floor and you can reinforce that with a mounting plate. There is a maximum size for mounting plates, which is in the CCR, so be sure to consult that. As always, when you're having something that is as important as safety gear installed in your car, it's highly recommended that you use somebody that is a professional, someone that has made these cages before, ideally someone that has put a cage in a BMW, or um, at least done NASA regulated cages. Um, and of course, when you do that, make sure that you show them the spec three rules to make sure that they are building something that doesn't have extra stuff that's going to be not legal. As always, with the spec three rules, if it doesn't say you can, then you can't. So good luck in your build, and I hope to see you on grid.